Since it's 6.30, we'll start. Welcome, not lovers. I'm glad you all got the note or, or saw on Facebook because um, we're all learning this social media, um, how, to, how to communicate with you, um, taking on that role. So we're all trying. So thank you for your patience. Um, and thank you for coming on because you kind of got that notice last minute. Thank you, Tilda, for doing the knot tying. Um, also, thank you, FFI, for the Zoom platform. If you are not familiar, this is uh, sponsored by FFI Women Connect. This is going to be live streamed on the Women Connect Facebook page. There's a, we also have a Facebook group. Uh, the page is called FFI Women Connect, and the group is called Fly Fishers International Women Connect. You can find us at Women Connect at flyfishersinternational.org. So you can reach any of us on the board. I'm Sandy Carpenter. I'm um, vice chair of FFI Women Connect. Tilda, who's presenting tonight, is our secretary, and everything else um, keeps <laughs> us on track, let me tell you. And the meeting is hardly over. I mean, and we get the notes. It's, it's pretty amazing. So welcome, everybody, to Not Tying. Um, I'll be monitoring chat, so if you need to um, ask Tilda something, and you know, we're a, we're a casual group. If you really want to stop her till we get to the third knot, um, go ahead and just say, Tilda, lovely, I missed that. Would you redo it? Um, so I see uh, Patty Lukens on. She's the president. Hi, Patty. Hello. How are um, y'all? Hello. Hello. We All right, and everybody Texas. got in, because usually what's been happening is, and we don't know why, half the people are in one room and half the people are in another room. So everybody <laughs> is here. Yay. <laughs> well, welcome, we're welcome. That. <laughs> yes. So Tilda, I'm going to spotlight you. Does, every, does anybody need to uh, run and get um, tie, or not tying stuff? Because we can, we can wait a minute. Um, there you go. There's Tilda. And she's got on hey. her FFI Women Connect shirt. She does. Do. It is. I lovely. want one of those. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can get one. I like uh, it. Okay. Yeah, uh, call uh, the FFI headquarters, and they uh -huh. have. Some. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Sandy. Um, one thing before we get started that I want to remind all of you is the FFI Virtual Expo, which is November 5th, 6th, and 7th. Um, registration is open at this time. Go to the FFI website and you can, that will send you a link to um, take you to a link where you can sign up. There are quite a few workshops that um, to pay for or there's a lot of workshops and demonstrations that come with your registration and registration is only $25 for all three days. So we'd love to have, you know, sign up early. And that way you make sure that you get into the um, classes that you want to get into. Um, and, uh, Hilda, if they have any trouble registering, call the office, what? Uh, uh, yes. Okay, if you can't remember your FFI membership number, um, yeah, the happy office will to help talk you. with you. And um, we may be recording some sessions of the virtual expo, but they will not be av immediately available if we do, and will only be selected ones. We would just assume that you come and register and go ahead and pay the $25 fee. This is a, um, and the, 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 the workshops themselves are not probably won't be recorded. Um, this is a money, a part of a fundraiser for FFI, as well as just an excellent educational opportunity. And there will be a couple of knot tying classes. And guys, so, there's over a hundred free events that you can go to. Plus, there's about sixty tires. And one class I want to plug beforehand that starts October thirteenth is uh, our own, uh, and I think there are three or four people signed up for it now. Um, we've got room for, I think, 10. Uh, but our own uh, uh, Gretchen Beatty is doing a beginning level fly time class. 
and I guarantee you it's going to be really good. And whether you're an absolute beginner or you are a advanced beginner, you'll learn something. So uh, please sign up for that class. It's going to be five months or five weeks long. So the 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 knots. I'm going to teach knots that will connect your fly, will connect leader to leader, um, and will also connect. Um, your leader to your fly line so that you can kind of get to the whole length of, you know, from one end of the leader to the other. So we'll start at the fly. And um, the first one that I'm going to teach is called the improved clinch knot. And it looks like that when it's tied correctly. And I'm going to briefly share a, my screen. And this is, can everybody see this? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. this is um, on the FFI website. And if you are an FFI member and have an have a uh, account on the FFI website, you can get uh, to this, um, this booklet and it's called Fly Fishing Knots and Rigging. And it has a whole bunch of knots and a whole bunch of rigging ideas for uh, that you can use. It's a wonderful reference. And you just go to the F uh, Fly Fishers International. There's a login here. And you can, if you don't have an account, you can create one. It's free with your membership. Um, and that will get you to the Learning Center, which if you press on Learn, you've got all of these ideas. And you know, there's the knots and rigging and other and all kinds of things. So it, the FFI website is a great, great resource. So the first knot is the clinch knot or improved clinch knot. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie this with big, um, um, with big yarn and, or big rope and then I'll tie it with fly lines so that you can um, see it easily to begin with and then a little bit harder. So basically the clinch knot, you're gonna put your, your leader or tippet through the fly, um, through the hook, fly eye, the eye of the fly. And you're gonna go around your, your, with, the ta um, with the tag end or the short end around your, your leader. And then a, a clinch knot just goes through, back through this hole here. The improved clinch nut goes back through this hole and then through this loop. And then you just cinch it up nice and tight and clip it off. So I'm gonna quit sharing here and I will tie it. So I'm gonna tie it with the big yarn first. And just because that's irritating. So I only need one. This is my hook for tonight. So I'm going to put my, my, this is my tippet. And I just put the tippet through there. And you can turn your tip, your hook like this once, twice. I'm just going to go three times, but if you, with a regular tippet, I would go five times unless you've got really thick tippet and then you can go a few lines less. Make sure that you leave yourself enough of a tag end that you're not going to pull it out. But you're, I'm going to go back through here. And if I just go this far and tighten it up, that's, an, that's a, a clinch knot. To make it the improved clinch knot, you're going to go back through this line like that. And this is kind of hard to see. And then you're just going to pull it up. And once you get it so that the, the tag end is not going to pull out, let go of the tag end and just pull it and kind of work, work it up so that you should have nice, um, nice smooth spirals just like this. If you pull on the tag end, that will loosen this knot and you'll get your piggy tails. And that's not what you want to do. So you want to not pull on this and just pull it up tight like that. So that's, that's with the, the big line. Or, or 
And when you, when you trim the end of that one, you're going to, you're going to leave yourself a little bit of a tag just so that it doesn't pull out. So now I'm going to use, um, I'm going to try and do this close. So I'm going to put it through here. So I've got, here's my tag end. And this end is, this end is tied to my, to my fly line. So I cannot move, I got to make sure I use this tag end because I am not putting my, my, fly, my fly rod all the way through my, um, this loop. So just gonna, the easy way is just to hold this and I'm gonna go once, twice, three, four, five times. I'm going to bring this tag in through this one, this one here. And then I'm going to bring it back through this open line. You would wet it ordinarily. So I, but, um, and I'm not going to do this because the wetting um, reduces the friction. So I've just got it pulled enough so that it's, the tag is not going to pull out. And then I'm just going to pull it and kind of help to keep the, the coils nice and neat and pull it until it's tight. And you have an improved clinch knot. You have a question, Tilda, is the improved clinch knot stronger than the regular clinch knot? Um, why one I over the other? I think it's stronger, but it's also going through two cinch points so that it's not going to come untied as easily as a regular quench knot. So you've got the cinch point of the first, you know, going through next to the hook. And then you've got the cinch point of um, going through that, that other loop so that it's just easier for it not to come through. Remember, if you, if you, as you're tightening it, you pull on this tag end, it's going to loosen the knot and then you'll get the piggy tail. And I would trim this. About that far. So you can see that it's still gonna stick up a little bit, but it's not gonna come loose when you trim it. Does anybody have any questions on this? Oh, is Jan, I don't think you're, I think you're muted. Your mouth is moving. Okay. Um, there we go. One of, one of the things that I learned on the lower sack, we catch some fairly large um, trout, like 23, 24 inch. Mm -hmm. And the, oh, and the guys, <laughs> it's ready. Um, the guy told me, because I kept losing some fish, because I use like a 4X uh, tippet uh, for those big fish. And he told me my problem was that I was using fluorocarbon and that I should just use a simple clinch knot. Because he said that when the, you start pulling on these big fish, sometimes uh, improved clinch knot, will, it will cut the line. And so I thought that was pretty interesting. That could be with fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon is a little bit more brittle than mm -hmm. regular, um, if, I, if I'm remembering this correctly, than regular tippet, um, regular nylon material, but it, um, and, and it could be sharper. Um, it's supposed to not break as easily, but I think sometimes that it does. I still um, use the improved clinch knot but I also tried to make sure that the tippet that I was using matched the fish that I was going after. So if I was going after big fish, I'm using bigger tippet so that I have less of a problem also because the tippet, the tippet strength as well as the knot strength um, will, um, you know, it, it may break. And it depended on where, where it was breaking. You know, was it breaking? here at the end of the you know at the end of the knot or was it breaking within the knot if it was breaking at the end of the knot the mm -hmm. fish was breaking it off if it was breaking within within the knot then it's going to be um the line is breaking itself 
Right. It was breaking within the knot. Yeah. Yeah. So that could be, and I could understand how that, you know, um, and, you know, I suppose if I learned to tie the improved clinch or the, the clinch knot better and got to a point where I trusted it more, I would, I could tie that uh, much more. Are there any other questions about the improved or the regular clinch knot? And uh, go ahead and unmute yourself if you have a, a, que a question, because I think everybody's muted. Does everybody want to tie this a time or two um, before we move on to the next and to ask questions as you're tying? I don't see anybody raising their hand. Okay. You know, that's one, I mean, I use that one all the time. So that's one of the few I know <laughs> killed it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping everybody knows this one. That's right. So, anyway. Yeah. Be before we go on to the next common, um, or to the, before we go on to the tip it to tip it or tip it to um, leader, I am going to tie another terminal fly um, uh, knot that I like to use when I'm nymph fishing because it's a loop knot and um, it, uh, and I like it because it doesn't slide and it's called a non-slip loop or a, or a cray loop. And I like to use this kind of a loop knot when I'm doing nymph fishing because the, it allows the, the fly to move more freely than a, um, than, than a clinch knot would do. So I'm gonna share the screen again. And this shows the non-slip loop or the cray loop. And basically what you do is before you put your tippet through the eye of the hook, you're gonna tie an overhand knot, and, but not tie it tight. It's just gonna be a loop. Then you're gonna tie the, put the tag end through the eye and you're gonna bring it back through and you're gonna go back through this loop the same way that it came out, that it went in. And then you're gonna wrap it around the leader or the tippet, and you're gonna bring it back through this loop again. And in between the two, uh, these two lines. And then you will pull it tight. The size of your loop depends on the size of the loop that you left when, um, below the overhand knot. So is that perfectly confusing? It's actually a really simple knot to tie. So I'm going to stop share. I'm going to use the orange thread. It's easier to see. So I'm just going to tie an overhand knot just like that. And I'm going to move it up here because I always tie, tie it too long. So I've got lots of length. This is attached to the rod. So here's the, my hook. I'm going to go through the eye of the hook. Now, you see that um, the overhand or the tag end came out towards the camera. So I'm going to put the, the tag end back through from the um, from going towards me. So now it's towards me. And I went about that big of a loop. And so now I'm going to go over and I'm just gonna do it three times. You do, with this knot, you don't have to do wrap it around a lot, just enough so that it's wrapped. And now I'm going to come back through this, um, this knot, this loop knot, um, just like, just the same way that it came and I'm gonna pull it up tight. And you can go ahead and, and use the, um, the tag end to pull it and you're gonna pull it up tight. You've got a nice um, smooth uh, line and you've got a loop. And this will 
um, workout. And the reason I like this one is it doesn't slip. If you use the uninot loop, that one slips, will slip on you if you use it as a, as a loop. So that's why I like this one. And I've had really good luck with it. And you, um, you would just trim this off close like this. You know, somebody had something to say. Oh, they have experience with this knot. Tilda, I need, I got stuck. I need you to okay. tie that one again too. Okay. Loop knot mentioned was that was out fishing clinch knot with the same feet one at our recent club saltwater trip when a member and his daughter tested it. Small study, but interesting. It seemed to work well for me that weekend, first time trying it in salt. So yeah, a loop knot, it just, you know, it gets to move a lot more freely than it would with a, um, with a, uh, just a regular uh, clinch knot. And anything that you want to really, um, to really move like a salt water fly or a nymph, you know, something like that, it's, um, it's much better. Okay, I'll tie it again. Thank you. So, overhand knot. Yep. And it doesn't matter which way the overhand knot goes, just so that you make sure that you're, you know, so this time it's coming out towards me. Okay. But, so you make the overhand knot first, then you put your tip it through the eye of the hook because the the knots the the lines coming out towards me i'm going to put it goes back through so it's away from me and then i'm going to go around the leader three or four times and then i'm going to bring it back through and kind of between it's between these two i don't know if you can see that but between the the where it came out before, and then I'm okay. just going to pull it up tight. Oh, I think I put it in the wrong hole. Okay. That's and on this good. one, you can, yeah, on this one, you can, you can pull on the tag end to help tighten it up. Oh, uh, that's better. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. That's what she said. Okay. Got it that time. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that worked. That looks much better. Okay. We are tied to the fly line or tied to the to rod. So we're going to tie an overhand knot. Go through your the eye of your hook. We're going to go back through the way that we came and twist it three or four times and then come back through the loop in between them and pull it up tight. Oh, look at that. And you wanna try and have the, um, this, on this one, the coils didn't line up nice and smooth, but you want to get the coils to be as smooth as you can. And here again on this one, I would trim it and leave a little bit of a tag. So I, I would trim it about like that. I don't know if you can see. If you can see that, but there's a little bit of a tag. Yeah, it'll catch weeds and stuff, but it keeps it from pulling out. Are there any questions on that one? I'll let you tie, give you a little bit of a chance to tie it. Yeah, try that again. And I think the first time I tied it, 
on the wrong side of the knot too. I tied it below. Yeah, that doesn't work yeah. so well either. And you'll see that the um on this that the the tag end kind of comes up between the in inside the loop. And that's okay. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much. It worked, Evelyn. Fast. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> I know it's always amazing. Like, oh my gosh, I have tried and tried and tried. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to go and try put a real fly on now. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Look at that. Woohoo! Good job. Good grief. Okay. <laughs> now we're going to move to tying tippet to leader or leader to leader, you know. Because as the day goes on, you're going to get shorter and shorter and you got to tie something new on. So you got to do something. The easiest knot, and it's a pretty strong knot, is the double surgeon's knot. Um, and it's really easy to tie. So this is my leader. It is attached to my, um, to my rod. I cannot put my rod through this little hole. Sorry, it just isn't gonna work. So you're just going to make a loop. Yes, I can do this. My rod's over on the other side. I'm gonna make her loop. And you wanna try and keep your, um, your lines, your tippet and your leader material straight, as straight as possible. Now, and now Tilda, we're not doing top to top, right? We're doing cross over the line. Do you okay. know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Right? Tip okay. The orange is my tippet. Yeah. So this is the tag end of my tippet. Yep. This is the, the one that's attached to yeah, the fly. So I'm the laying it on top of it rather than having two ends end to end like that. Right. right? Okay. So yeah. here's the end of my leader. Okay. My rod is over here. Yep. Yep. So okay. The, I the started short ends out are going wrong. in Thank opposite you. directions. <laughs> yep. So you just make a loop. Just like that. And because this is at the end that's attached to my fly, it's pretty short. So it's going to go through the um, this loop. So you want to make sure that you make your loop big enough to put your fly through or, or at least the end of your tippet through. And you're just going to go over and through once with both and with both pieces and then over and through twice. You're going to lick it and then you're just going to gently pull it together. And kind of make sure that all the pieces. Um, yeah, all the pieces tighten up together. Harder with a rope. And here again, you're wanting to make a nice smooth knot that looks like that. And with this knot, both and um, you should have it, it's going to pull from this the when it gets pulled on, it's going to be pulled from um, through the center. So the knot is over the top of the lines, and the strength of the knot comes because it the um, lines are in line with each other, and they're they're. Um, there's nothing hanging out. The triple surgeon's not just means that you do that over, you tie it three times instead of twice. Um, this knot is really, really good when you have a dramatic difference in diameter of your um, of your tippet and your leader. You know, some you hopefully you only have maybe one size difference. But sometimes, you know, you're out on the river, you've used all your 5X, your leader is at 3X or 2X, and all you've got is 6X. Well, this knot actually is really good for making, for that kind of a differentiation uh, between leader and tippet. Um, in fact, much better than a blood knot. A blood knot can pull loose when you've got too dramatic of a difference in, uh, line sizes. 
you answered my question. I was going to ask you what's the advantage over a blood knot aside from being easier to tie. Yeah, I've always heard that blood knots are stronger, but I don't know. They are. They are very strong, um, but that is one of the disadvantages is if you've got a really big difference in the um in the in the diameters a blood i've had a blood knot pull loose on me and i have never had a surgeon's knot pull loose on me so we're going to tie this here's my rod i'll tie it in the short ones so we're going two different sizes and make sure that you leave yourself. I, I sometimes try and be too frugal and I don't leave myself enough um, at the end of my, you know, to trim off and to tie with. And sometimes it can be kind of hard. So I've made my knot. I'm going to go through once and I'm going to go through twice. I'm going to wet, you know, wet the knot to reduce the friction and then you just pull it and pull both ends together and then when you um, get it close just kind of work it so that they um, come together nicely and if you've tied it right you know and had them had you know tied them kind of flat it'll work i have never used this for tippet rings but i don't know why you couldn't and i will show you one um I will show you another loop knot to use for uh, droppers, and that might be what your um, might help also. But that's what it looks like. It's a nice smooth knot. And then when I would tie, if I were to trim this, I would trim it right about there, probably leave about an eighth of an inch from out from the um you could you could cut it clear close but there's really no reason not to leave a little bit of a tag in and i just recently read someplace that one of the reasons that people have problems with knots coming loose is that they tie they trim their tag in too close I don't use tippet rings, so I can't really answer that, but maybe someone else can, um, you know, if they've used tippet rings, answer. So, um, Ray and Sherry Meal said, do you ever use this for tippet rings? Now, Sandy, isn't this the one that you've got a story yeah. for? Yeah. Tell your story. Are i will tell you my story all right so um we were uh, if you want you can spotlight yourself i'll, I'll share the spotlight it. with you um so we were uh, our um sportsman shop here um does a did a women's fly fishing and of course it's put on by men and uh um you know they're just they're just not they're just not thinking like women and they're, they were just struggling with this knot. They were all beginners. Um, several of them had never held a fly rod before. Nice class, 20 some women. Um, and they were like, is there some sort of visual? And he's like, yeah, here's the visual. And uh, um, I'm like, no, 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 no. What can you do? So um, I said, Here, here's what the visual is, is here's your lines, make a snowman head, take the snowman scarf, wrap it around and punch the snowman in the back of the head. All right, and if you want to double, wrap that scarf around again and punch him in the back of the head again. <laughs> Get the thing down your throat and uh, there you go. That's a very nice knot. Thank you. My snowman. I can do that one better than that uh, loop one, but I, that I'm excited about the loop one. Thank you, Tilda. You're welcome. Now, for those of you that, you know, are in California, the snowman may seem uh, foreign, but, uh, you know, <laughs> take your husband's head. 
Maybe we should use Bigfoot out there. <laughs> so, when you're mad. Um, Danny Rose said that she uses a clinch nut with her tipper rings. So does anybody have any questions with the double surgeon's knot? It's pretty easy to tie. And like all of these, you will get a whole lot faster at tying them if you spend some time at home practicing your knots before you go fishing. And I would say learn two or three knots, you know, the knots that you need to tie whatever it is that you're needing to tie and, or, you know, what, however, however you need to tie, learn those forwards and backwards so that you can tie them in three or four seconds flat. And then you're not spending a whole bunch of time fumbling around trying to tie the darn knots on the water. You're spending more time fishing than you are tying knots. And the better the knots you tie, the less time you have to tie knots because they're not coming undone all the time. So I'm going to show you the blood knot. We might not give have a whole lot of time to practice it tonight, but I'm going to show it to you because I think it's a good knot to know. And sometimes it's, it is better than the, um, the double surgeons, but, um, and it, it's just kind of a cool knot. So here again, my rod's over here. It's not going through any knot holes. I've, you're going to take your, the short ends of your tippet and your leader, and they're gonna go in opposite directions. Oh, let's do the big one first. They're going in opposite directions. So you're gonna take, I'm gonna start with my left hand and you're gonna take the short one on the left hand and you're gonna go over your, um, in this case, over my tippet uh, or actually that's my fly line or my leader. So I'm gonna go over the leader once, twice, three times, and then I'm going to bring it back. I've kind of left a little opening here. So here's the short end of my leader. I'm going to bring it back through and just hold it there. So it's between the two, not uh, between the two lines. And then I'm going to take my, my forefinger and my thumb and I'm just going to cut, hold it there and make myself a loop. And I'm going to go, the up, go over the top. If you remember to go over the top each time, you'll do this right. So you're gonna go over the top once, twice, yeah, come on. And you're gonna go over the top with the short end, twice, three times. Now, make sure when you've done this three times that you're, you're gonna put this back through this loop that you just made, but make sure you go in the opposite direction that your other one did. So you've got a an end going through both sides, just like that. And you're just gonna pull it tight enough so that the ends don't pull out. And come on, rope work right. There we go. And you're just gonna tighten it up. Here again, trying to keep your wraps really nice and, and uh, even. So, you see that you got one tag end on the top, one tag end on the bottom. They're both they're going in different directions, and you and by pulling this tight, it's going to pull it up, and that's what cinches this knot in the center. And it should be a nice smooth knot. On this one, I would um, clip these right at the knot. And the reason for that is it um, doesn't leave anything. And there's an exception, and I'll tell you that in a minute. It it there's nothing to catch for the knot to catch on, or you know you won't catch weeds and stuff on it. But this is actually a good knot to put a dropper on. And what you would do if you're going to use a dropper is leave one of these ends, and I don't care which end. Some people might say the tippet end, some might say the leader end. I don't think it matters. But I would leave it longer, significantly longer, for however, whatever depth you want your dropper to be at. And you would tie your fly on the end of that one 
So you would not clip that one off. You would just clip the other, the other side. Does everybody understand that? There is a, there's a blood knot tool out there if you want to spend the money for it that kind of has like two posts and, you know, I've never used it because I actually learned to tie the blood knot by hand, but some people find that that might be, that that's useful. So that is the blood knot. I'm gonna look here. I have two. <laughs> okay, I understand. Okay, let's see here. Here again is my maybe. There we go. Here's my rod. Good one, Marlene. <laughs> so here, here's my rod. If I can unhook everything from, I got a desk full of knots here. So here's a nicely tied blood knot. It's nice and even, and this one I trimmed to the knot. But when you trim this to the knot, that you can see how, if you had a really huge difference in diameters, how this one would pull loose really easily. But this one here, um, you've got, you're pulling through the center of the knot, which makes it a nice strong knot. So I'm gonna tie this so as if I was gonna have a dropper so you can see what I'm talking about with that one. So I will leave my, the tag end for my leader, which is in this hand, a little longer than um, the other one. So here I am. I'm going to go over one. This is once. Come on, fingers twice, three times. And this is one of those that I tend to forget to leave myself enough and put it through. And because I'm going over the top, you know, it just, however it comes back up is how I put it through. So here's the, um, the leader or the tippet end. So I'm, and I'm holding it with, and keeping up, making myself a loop. And I'm going to go over once, twice, three times. If you've got real thin tippet, you might go four times. And I'm going to put it back through the opposite way that my first one went through. So it looks like that. I'm just going to pull it tight, kind of hold on to these and pull it tight enough so that they're not going to slip out on me as I tighten it, like this is trying to do. You wet it. And then on this one, you're going to pull the long ends so that they, um, because that's how the knot, you know, if you pull on the short ends, it's not gonna do you any good. Unless of course you didn't tie it good enough. Okay, so pulling it tight. So there's my knot. I've got a short end up on top. That I will that I would cut right next to the knot, and I have a longer end that I can actually tie a fly here and use this as a dropper. Um, so that's another um, another use for this knot is to create a dropper. And let me see if I can find the blood knot in this book. There's the blood knot. I will show you. Thank you, Patty. I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, so 
Here's the blood knot. You can see how they've kind of, how they've wrapped one side, put it through. They've wrapped the other side and put it through the opposite way. You've got, you leave yourself enough tag in so they don't pull out. You pull it tight by pulling on the long ends and you trim the tag ends close to the knot. And they say make at least five up to seven wraps on each side um, so, because the knot is increased by how many wraps you make. Um, if you've got thinner tippet, use more. If you've got thin, um, thicker tippet, use less. Are there any questions on this knot? Man, this is a stupid knot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I spent I spent many hours learning this knot, so <laughs> I understand it. It it takes some coordination, and if you don't have really good nimble fingers, um, it can be hard. This is one of the better knots for building leaders because it helps be, because when you trim it, uh, when you're trimming the tag ends close to the knot, it makes a, a smoother. Um, Line, a, a smoother knot and a smoother line transition than like um, you, you could use a surgeon's knot to do it, but you're going to have more um, more chances for pull out uh, or you could have more um, not necessarily pull out, but just more chances to snag. Um, Sandy, are you monitoring Facebook questions if there are? Oh, any? no, it's hard to have. Uh two screens open. I'll go take a look. Okay. They got an important question for me, Danny. <laughs> I don't know. I just have a, a, a fishing uh, pal over on Facebook and I, I guess you, you, you've been chatted up over there too. Oh, okay. okay. I'll go check. Um, Thank you. If, if I was building leaders, I would probably use this knot. Um, it just makes for a smoother leader. Um, one of the things with all uh, with these knots is you can use um, uh, it's called knot sense, and it's kind of a UV resin or glue, and you can put them on the knots to help make them stronger and not come apart. Especially if you're fishing saltwater, um, that helps. And I think knot sense is put out by Loon Outdoors. I haven't used it for a long time, but um, so that's the blood knot. And so it's useful for making leaders. It's also useful for doing, um, putting on droppers. Now, if there's no questions on that one and nobody wants me to slow down to, so they can tie it, the next knot that I'm going to do is a perfection loop. And a perfection loop, and you could, you could use the non-slip loop also uh, for this, but a perfection loop is good for, as a um, terminal loop at the end of your leader so that you can do a loop to loop connection on a on your line your fly line and if your fly line doesn't have a loop on it it's an easy knot to use on that also so that you can put it a loop on the end of it that's not already there and it's not usually going to come loose so this one some people use the toilet seat for this one so I'm just going to tie it and explain it as I normally would, and then we'll get somebody else to do, or I'll do it, explain it the other way. And so I think you make, you make a loop and I put the loop so that the end that is uh, the long end goes over the short end. And, and for me, it's in front of me. So it crosses over in front of me. And then I go behind it and make another loop. And then I take the, and just kind of go over the tag end. And then I take, and I go take my, the same long end and I put it between, actually, let's do this different. We use the short end here. 
So I make a loop and then I go around behind with the short end and make another loop. And then I go between them with the short end. And then I pull the back loop through the front loop and pull on the long end and the, the loop that I just pulled through and pull it tight. If you do this not right, your tag end will be going out 90 degrees from your long end. So it's just like that. And basically, this is a bowling knot with a loop. Are there any questions so far? So it kind of looks like a square knot here, and you can tell you can see the bowline on this side. So there's the I'm unlacing square knot. my shoes, so I have some string, but I do have a trick to tying this knot, which is that I've okay. always described it as a butterfly. So the first loop is like the first wing of the butterfly, and then okay. you hear Karen, the loop. Karen, I'll, wait. She, she's I'll add you, you, and you can show us. Okay, Karen. Okay. I had to get some string. <laughs> <laughs> Unlace my shoe. Okay, so I'm left-handed, so this will probably screw everybody up. But but the general idea of the butterfly, you can get no matter which way you go. So I um, form the first loop. Mine is in front facing me, and that's that's the first wing of the butterfly. So then I wrap it around, and I form the second wing of the butterfly. So you see, I've got two wings, and then I put the tag end through the middle and that's the body of the butterfly. And then, you know, I pull one through and the other through and tighten it up. And then you get your little perfection loop. So that's the general idea. I've always used that image to get, get the um, body of the knot. Hope it helps. No, oh, that's a great, you. you know, some people, you know, that, that visual picture in their mind is, is necessary. So I will tie it one more time. So we've got the first wing. We have the second wing. We put the body through. We bring the second wing through the first wing and pull it no, tight. Through the, oh yeah, second wing through the first wing. Yeah, and pull it tight and that works. So when you, when you lay that string through the middle of the two loops, that's the body of the butterfly. So you've got right. wing, wing, body body and then the yep. first loop through the second and you and get a the nice size of, yeah you get you, you get an, a very nice move knot the size of this and loop it's good. It's good. Uh, depends on how big you make your loops if you want a small loop make small wings if you want a big loop make bigger wings that's the one that I was taught that that first loop is the back of the toilet. And then the next loop is the seat <laughs> of the toilet. And then you finish it up. <laughs> and if it slides up and down like this does, you did it wrong. It should not slide. It should right. stay put. So that just means that one of your loops was backwards or something. So play with yeah. it until you get it right. And and the easiest way to know that you've tied it, you know, besides the, the sliding, if you've got one go pointing east and one pointing south, you've got it tied right. If they're both pointing down, it's wrong. So this is, um, this is a great knot for creating any kind of a loop that you need to make, especially a terminal loop. It's a little harder to, you could tie a fly on like with this if you really wanted to. Um, what you would have to do is put your fly on first. Wait a minute, no. You tie it, you do the first wing. You put the fly on, you do the second wing, you do the body, and then you've got to bring your fly and that second wing through the first wing and pull right. it up. Right. I mean, it, and that, you can do it, but it's not, it's not always the easiest way. 
So, um, but it, it is a nice way to, um, it isn't, it is, it can be useful. I like it better than a mono slip uh, knot. And it is an easy, I think, once you get yeah. the perfection loop yeah. down, it's an easy way to create a small loop, which is what you want when you want your, your fly to wiggle a little bit. In yeah. saltwater fishing, we use that a lot mm -hmm. because we want our fly to wiggle so in the water like it, a fish rather than, you know, a bug. Yeah. Um, this is probably an easier knot to tie than the uh, cray, cray loop because there, there's fewer moving parts. So it doesn't matter which one you use. Just learn one of them so that you can, you can tie it. Um, and this I'm is also gonna... good for tying your leader on if, it, if, if for some reason the built-in loop breaks or something and you need yeah. to do a loop to loop then yeah. make your perfection loop and connect or the you, two. Or you, or you find, you know, you, you accidentally line. buy a leader that doesn't have a loop on it. So um, yeah. I'm not going to teach uh, a um, an Arbor knot or an Albright knot. If you, if you need to tie your um, line to your backing, you could use this or you, an Albright knot works really good or just ask your fly shop to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and definitely ask your fly shop to tie the, the backing onto your, um, onto your, your reel. They've got all the tools that you need to do it. And, you know, it's a service that, they, that they're pretty much very willing to do for you um and i don't even worry about trying to tie them on they know how to do it they do it all the time i let them do it now are there any questions on the perfection loop did everyone get one that doesn't slide no mine slides um okay so then, did then I so do you want to show it has to do you... with how you start it whether it's in front or back that that works out so that it gets woven into the knot rather than being a little loose piece there. Got it, because I got it. I worked okay with the rope, <laughs> but alas, <laughs> this seems okay. a little meaty for my flies. I will tie it with a, a fly line. So one of the things is to make sure, you know, because you're, you're using the, to make that first wing so that when you make the loop, um, it's going over the top in front. So the cross is, it, it, it's crossing so that it's in front. In front, front meaning you. close to you? Yeah, or close in front to you. Yeah. Meaning close to you. And then because you're, you're basically, you're always going to be wrapping around. This is the long one. You're always going to be wrapping around um, your leader. Or, so... The second wing is going to go around behind. You still, you've wrapped around. And then the body is going to go between the two. And so you've, you've basically gone around this post twice. It, it's kind of like, let me see if I can remember this. So the rabbit comes and it goes around the tree and it goes through through and around the tree and then comes back up through the hole or so if you can remember that how to tie uh the the story to tie the bowline because that's what this is that's how you do it this is where the loop is small pull the second wing through with your forceps yes if you want a small loop forceps are really good Appreciate them just when you know the third. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry that your that your computer's working badly. Um, so anyway, that's a, a really good knot. Now, if sometimes you want to put a dropper on in the middle of your fly line and or your leader or tippet, but you don't want to cut your line. You just want to put a dropper, a short dropper on. Well, one of the easy ways to do that 
is you take wherever it is that you want to put your um, your line through or your fly. Um, and I would put your fly on through there. Or actually, let me do this different. So you put where, wherever it is you want to put your line, your fly in the middle of your tippet. Just make a loop. And then what you're going to do is you, you're going to basically do an overhand knot. And if the more times that you do this, the stronger it gets. So if I do like a double surgeons, so I'm going to put it through twice and then pull it tight. This gives you a nice smooth knot. And one of the reasons for doing doubles and triples is it smooths out the knot as opposed to just a single. And then what I would do to tie my knot, my fly on here, is I would put it through the eye of the, um, of the fly and then go over the top of the fly and pull it tight. And that gives you what they call a lark's head knot on your fly. And you've got a dropper. This would be a short dropper, which is sometimes you want. Oh, this is what this is. Okay, I see what you're And it's easy to change out that fly if, if something's not, if it's not working. Could you say the name of that knot again, please? You, you said large. This is a, this is a double, uh, it's a double surgeons and the knot that I use, or what I use to tie the, put the fly on called a lark's head. And basically you go through the eye and then you go over the fly and, and pull it down tight. And that's, I think that's just called a lark's head because that's what I've heard it called. Thank you. And let's see, we did that. I'm not gonna show a nail knot. Not going to show an Albright knot. These um, Arbor knots and Albright knots and all, you know, there's a bunch of other um, knots that you can use and they're in this, um, uh, in this, this rigging, knots and rigging. They even talk about a dropper rig using tippet rings. When you tie on droppers, do you do the eye of the hook or the of the curve? It depends on what. It depends on my mood. I've done, <laughs> and, and and a lot of it depends on what I'm trying to do. Um, I have tied um, directly off of the first fly, and so you've got a fly. Um, you've got a fly here. And then there's a fly. So I, 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 I've got a fly here. Um, this, this fly is um, attached by the eye and this fly is attached by the, or let's do it the other way. This fly is attached by the eye and then this is the, the um, hook and bend of the hook. And so the other, the next fly is attached off of the bend of the hook. And definitely, if you're going to do it that way, you need to use a clinch knot or, um, or some that's gonna snug up. Otherwise, it, there's a possibility, well, if you use a loop knot, the, you're gonna lose your other fly. So you definitely, if you're gonna tie off of the, you know, your first fly, you need to use a clinch knot. Um, if, I, if I want it to, um, go off of the middle because I want it to maybe to be shorter, like using this kind of a knot and I want it to be uh, just up shorter. I would not tie it off of the um, fly. I, I'm tying it in the middle of the tippet. And so that's another way is just, you know, that 
is just a different area in the water column. Um, and this and a different length away from your other fly. Um, if you use the um, if you use this kind of a setup here again, um, you've got a fly down here and you've got a fly off of here and it's just a different location for your your different rig. Thank you, Danny, for uh, joining us. And please, if you've got any questions on knots or anything, let us know. Uh, like I said, the uh, rigging and knot or the knots and rigging pamphlet on the website is a really good uh, resource. You do have to sign in to FFI to get. Yes, you do it, have to sign in. Yeah. Um, are there any knots that I haven't covered that somebody would like me to attempt to tie? Oh, I know what I was going to show you. Um, if you're really having problems with knots, there is a tool called the Tie Fast Knot Tire. And it is, let's see if I got, if there's a picture. There's a picture of what the tool actually looks like. So this is the tool. Um, you can also find something like this on some, I, I don't happen to have one with me, but some clippers will have um, something that uh, rotates off to the side and has kind of a channel. That's the same thing as this, it, it's a similar as this tie fast knot, to, knot tire. And basically what this does is it ties, um, it gives you something to, to wrap around and it's tying a bunch of the same types of um, knots just using different ways. So you can tie a basic grip knot to tie your lead, um, your tippet to your hook, so the, the terminal knot. Um, they have a splice knot, which you can tie tippet to leader with. Um, you can use it to tie a nail knot so that you can tie um, your leader to your fly line with this also. So it's actually a very useful tool. Um, and for a long time, this is the, these are the knots that I tied until my husband kept complaining at me and it's taking you forever to tie knots because I'd always have to go looking for the two, you know, pulling out the tool and then, you know, tying the knots and then, but, you know, I got, so I was tying pretty fast with them, but I also learned my other knots eventually. But if you're having a real hard time or, you know, dexterity can be a problem, this actually is a pretty good tool to use. And, you know, if, you know, somewhere down the line, if somebody wants, I could teach how to use the knot tying tool or the, the tie fast. I just have to know ahead of time so I can find mine or find one that'll work. Well, you know that if you uh, offer, it will be accepted. Well, <laughs> give right. me a few months to do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me some time in between. Great, great job. Yep. Are there are there any questions on knots? I have a comment. This is Jan yes. Redding. Um, I think that you've showed us all the knots that we need to know. Those are the uh, the basics. If you know those knots, you've got it made. Mm -hmm. and, and you know that's kind of why th these are the knots I know, and I practiced them. And um, thank you, Marlene. Um, and I've learned how I can tie them fast. Um, and you know, it's it's really important to practice your knots at home. Right. Thank you. That was a great presentation. Yes. Well, thank, thank you, you. Gilda. So oh. practice, practice, practice. And yeah, and who can make knots? Using shoe shoelaces is, is a whole different, different experience. I was just saying practice with tippet because shoelaces yes. are a whole different experience. Yeah, and, and fly line, you know, fly line helps. I mean, the rope is hard 
you know, it, it's good to kind of show the basics, but it's hard to get them to, to, to pull up good. Um, but, uh, you know, fly, old fly line is really nice to, to practice with, but yeah, to practice with tippet and, and leaders so that you get used to using that thin material and figuring out how, you know, what light to get it in so that you can tie it. Do we have any um, your own nymphers out there? I, I, I did it with Marianne, but I did not tie that row of flies on. I don't, I don't have any idea how you would tie that. She gave me a diagram once, and I think you can print diagrams from online. Yeah, because I don't, set up I don't and then know. You just copy it. Yeah, what time of what type of knot you use to hang that euro nymph off of that loop? But I forget. Let me see if it's in here. Thank you. Uh, uh, it's not. Doesn't she I'm just not... use the double cinch? I don't know. I mean, the double surgeon. And with a long tag, but then you have to do an overhand uh, knot above it so that it falls uh, ninety degrees down. Right. It, let's see, your check style, which I think yeah, your own yeah, is yes, part yeah, of. Yeah. Um, what are you doing? Which shot? Well, it tells you how. <laughs> How to put the rig together just doesn't tell you what knots to use. Yeah, I just, <laughs> really just a curious add-on conversation. Yeah. Right. But I, I would Marianne say Marianna in the email yeah. before I come to the drift list. Patty, you were going to say something earlier when I interrupted. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's fine. All I was going to say was only Tilda could make knot tying enjoyable. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> uh -huh. well, it doesn't have to be onerous, you know, you just um, you have fun with it, you know, make yourself a necklace of all your favorite knots. You know, I, ha um, I, I basically kind of did that. I, I tied the knots to, um, or most of the knots as much as I could. And so, let me turn my chat off here. So that is the um, cray loop. And that is a perfection loop in the middle of my leader. So that's, an, you, you can tie this again. And there's a blood knot. And there is the double surgeon's loop. And there is the improved clinch knot. So, and I, I did this one time when I did a, we did a knot tying it um, for casting rec for recovery one time. I just kind of, one of the things that they, I think they did was to, to tie knots and to tie themselves a necklace kind of as they, you know, something together that everybody had done as part of their ending ceremonies. But Ooh. just practice. Knots don't have to be hard and just make them fun. And like I said, just choose the knots you can tie and just make sure that you've got, a, you know, two or three knots that'll fit the occasions that you need and find the ones that you can tie and learn how to tie them fast. I, I have met people who say that they're, the basic clinch knot is, is easier and just as efficient as the improved clinch knot. Although yeah. my experience is not that. <laughs> my my <laughs> basic ones have come unraveled on, on occasion and I've lost flies. Mine too. And that's why I always use an improved oh, clinch knot true. because yeah. mine tend to come unraveled. But I think the biggest key to the clinch knot is don't pull on the tagline when you are tightening it up because that will loosen it every time. Hmm. So you just cinch it down basically. When you're pulling, yeah, you, you're pulling you, it to you, tighten the, 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 like to get it to layer up. Yeah. You, you, you hold on to the, to the tag end just long enough, you know, as you're pulling it so that it's not going to pull out. And then you grab onto your fly and you, the other end and you just pull it tight. Good to know. Hey guys, next week we have a, a really special, uh, time for you. 
we're going to be tying from the Driftless Rendezvous. Oh, yeah. And, uh, Sandy and Marlene have done a fantastic job of taking it. Oh, is that one of the cookies? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, oh boy. You anyway, can unspotlight me. <laughs> All right. I'll unspotlight you. And let's see. Mar I'll spotlight Marlene. Show and her cookies. cookies. Yeah, these are oh. tall. Oh, no. I feel, I feel hey. my butt growing as I'm sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> and you know. Not only. Are we going to have these cookies for us to eat? But we are going to have an auction where you can get your own bunch of those cookies. Uh, wow. so, uh, yeah. So anyway. who that, Tom, inform me today that there is a shortage of toffee bits. They can't uh -oh. make them. So. You need me to bring some from Arkansas if I can find them? If you, if you can find them, bring them some toffee bits. I will. Yeah. Because maybe if we can get them from all the states. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then he'll have to be making cookies for the next year, which will be. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> so tune in next uh, uh, Tuesday night at 730. And we will have, we're going to have a baker's dozen tires. And uh, we are also going to start an auction that night for a cabin in Maine. And it's right outside is a lake full of brook trout. And not only did you get a two bedroom cabin with this auction, but you also get one day of a guided trip and there's a fly fishing museum there and you get uh, free admission into that museum. So this is uh, from Mona Brewer and uh, it's her cabin that has been absolutely redone and it looks lovely. So we will put some pictures online and uh, we are accepting bids when you want to uh, start bidding. Well, I and oh, I was gonna say the last thing I was going to do, I'm gonna share my screen oh, sorry. one more time, is join us for the FFI Virtual Expo. Yes. And let's see, is that sharing? Share, there we go. Sharing. So um, this is on the front page of the expo and just click to learn more. And this will take you to where it's at. We've got workshops and raffles. Um, there's a film competition. And if you want to register, go to workshops, seminars, demonstrations, view schedule and register. And that'll take you where you want to go. And you can um, look at the virtual expo by day. So these are these will show what is offered on each day or by the type of classes that you want to take. So we've got fly tying casting, there's women connect activities, destinations, um, fly fishing skills, conservation, and leadership development. We would love to see all of you ladies there. We want to have an overwhelming number of ladies. And for the obvious reason is that we're the best and we want FFI to know it. <laughs> That's right. I think they already know that, so. Well, 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 we want to be sure that they're uh, well. <laughs> we got to live up to our reputation. That's right. That's right. right. Okay. okay. Um, is there anything that people need to bring for next week tying, Patty? I'm going to have all the stuff to tie the mouse that hopefully we'll get to fish with later. I will have uh, some materials with me to tie whatever. I will also have, uh, I'm going to bring a bunch of vices. So, okay, so uh, tell this group if they want to tie with us what they need to bring. Well, uh, if, if, you're, uh, if you're going to be tying from home, I'm going to send out the mouse pattern okay. uh, information. So thank you. Uh, you and, and one thing that I will hold on, let me show you one thing. Here is um, you want to get the um, barred pine squirrel. Can you all see that? Um, don't use bunny. If you use rabbit. It will sink, but pine squirrel floats. 
So be sure when you're getting your materials that you use this. And I use tan foam and I use some silly legs uh, and then uh, uh, some uh, thread. And really that's about it. But you said you're bringing that or should we get that? For those of you that are going to be at the ex are going to be at the Driftless Rendezvous, you will have materials in a bag to tie. And I okay. use a number two hook, a Mustat number two, 30, 36 something, I think. But it's a number two, it's a bass hook, it's uh, their stinger hook. Yeah, okay. so this is for those that are tying at home with us. Yes. There you are, Patty. Also... There's your mouse. <laughs> Oh, wait, I got it. I got it. Oh, oh, yeah. Kate's tying them. Yeah. Well, Patty taught it two years ago at FFI. I did. Boise. And I pulled these out for this weekend because I'm going mousing Saturday night. Let's see that mouse. Well, if I can figure out how to do it. Okay. There, there you go. go. Oh. Yeah. Ah, that's cool. That and looks it's good. An easy tie as and it's an as easy the, tie. The mouse. Way easier than a lot of other mice. And I got to tell you, I have caught tons of fish on this mouse. Tons. Like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed I mean, tons, is that? a lot, I guess. Yeah. Um, Patty gave us enough materials at FFI to tie five of these. I got three tied. I have materials. Hmm. I'm going to tie two more tonight. Oh. All right. We'll be good. And, and Kate is going to teach us at the Driftless how to mouse at night. Oh, yeah. man, I'm so jealous. <laughs> well, let's hope I learn that in one night. <laughs> <laughs> I will have good teachers. Uh, you Me have too. to. Sorry. You I'm have so to. sorry. Evelyn's going to be there. there. Evelyn yeah. knows how to. <laughs> well, I think, you gotta be my mice. Water by, I think you have to be off the water by 11, so we'll have to get going early. Mm. Well, we'll, we can't get to the water till after we have our gourmet meals. Oh, that's <laughs> that's right, because we've got Jerry Myers cooking for us on Tuesday night and Wednesday night and Thursday for breakfast. Oh, wow. So uh, uh, between oh, that and Marlene's husband's cookies. Yeah. I'm not sure that we'll all be able to waddle through the door coming yeah. home. We're going to have to get bigger <laughs> Zoom screens by. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those cookies are wonderful. And if you've ever gone anywhere with Jerry, you know that every meal is just absolutely awesome. If you've been to a party at her shop, she has a buffet oh. line that goes forever. And it's mm. wonderful. Well, ladies, I am so sorry that I am unable to be uh, there. I know. But, I wish you were coming. Well, you know, I've got this back issue and I cannot stand up for more than like 10 minutes anymore. So, oh, shit. Oh. yeah, well, well I'll we be... can let you sit and do nothing with us. We're going to be doing a lot of laughing <laughs> and a 